What's up YouTube, back here again with another video, and today we're going to go over the review of the Wismac Theorem. Okay, I got it here broken down into its parts, uh, we're going to wick it up, and we're going to vape it. So we'll start off here, uh, it's a 22 millimeter dripping, it's a like a dripper tank atomizer, you got your um, coil uh, system on top and your wicks go down into the liquid. Okay, so it's a little different than a tank or a dripper, kind of puts them together. So, rebuildable dripping tank atomizer. Okay, so 22 millimeter holds about two mils of, uh, of liquid, and I've really been liking it so far. All right, the flavor is very good. Um, it's pretty easy to fill, easy to wick, and you know, that's pretty much, pretty much the case. So, when you get it, Okay, now if you want to see all the parts in the box and see what everything comes with, go watch uh, my unboxing video. Here we're just going to go over go over my final thoughts on it. So, when you first get it, it's going to have this, this airflow ring on. Okay, this is for you either using the side airflow, coming from the back of the coil, or you can spin it around and put the airflow onto the top of the coil. I like using this one, so I change this one, put this one on, and I shut it down to about, about right there. And this is one of the, you know, the biggest con I think is the airflow system here is a little, you know, it's a little annoying to set, you know, once you set it, set it and forget it. Mr. Popeil said it's the best. Ronco set it and forget it. Okay, so as you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble with it. My fat fingers are getting in the way. All right, let's try to set it once I get up, get it all on top of the tank. So you look here. This is pretty much the whole, the whole shebang. So you got your coil posts here at the top. Here's your positive and your negative posts. Okay, you can put a dual vertical coil in here, a single horizontal. Okay, it's pretty much made to have all the coils on this side. All right, and it's got this open back design, which is pretty much a pain in the butt. Trying to get your, you know, you have to pull your coil really hard over and then screw your screw down onto the lead. Uh, you can see on here right now I have a um, triple twisted 26 gauge um, coil on here. It gets the resistance around the 0.4 ohms range. Okay, and uh, you know the flavor's been good on all, on pretty much all the coils I put on here. Um, I didn't really care for the dual verticals too much. The single horizontal I think is just fine for my vape style. You know I don't think this tank was intended for those who like to get super low resistance and crank the wattage really really high because the way the liquid needs to feed, it needs just a little bit of time to feed the liquid up the wicks and um, and keep your keep your wick. Or keep your coil fed with with liquid. So this is like a 0.3 ohm. We'll see. You know, you vape between 35 and 45 watts, and and it vapes really really well. So what we'll do is we'll wick it up. We'll build up the tank here, and we'll close it out. So I just got organic cotton. You know the pads. Okay, we're gonna pull it through. Now this is a two and a half millimeter coil. Whatever you put on here, you gotta you know decide where you want to you know how thick you need it so now the biggest thing you need to keep in mind when wicking this tank and this is with the notch coil or with your own coils or you know however you want to do it okay it's the best way you're going to get it to wick is if you cut your wick short so they sit right about there see how they're not that long you don't want them long the longer they are, you know, you're not going to clear out the liquid. You, you know, you're not going to get it out of there, and it's just going to, and it's not going to feed as well. So the first thing you need to do when you get this tank, okay, when you take it out of the box, it's going to be have the notch coil on it, okay, and then it'll have this super duper long cotton. It's going to go down, and it's going to be tucked back here. Take your cap off, take the cotton out, and slowly heat your notch coil. And that'll also take away from the bad taste because I got it like a bad taste off the notch coils because they weren't like preheated or anything like that. So take the cotton out, give the notch coil like a little bit of heat, 20 watts, let it get a little red just a little bit, 
and then re-wick it and shorten it down to right about there. That's going to be your best option to get that notch coil to work. The other thing for the notch coil, because it's so round, five millimeters around, once you get your cotton in and you get it, you know, not too tight, not too loose, you need to trim down, trim down this cotton. Because if it's too thick in this groove, it's going to just airlock it and you're not, it's not going to wick that well. So you want to thin it down so you have some space. I'll show you what you, you know, what you want to do once you get the cap on. So you want to get it to be, you know, roughly that thick, whether you're using the notch or your own coil, and, and that's going to be your best option to get it wicking at it at its best. So the notch coil. There's been some, I guess, controversy with the notch coil, and a lot of people don't like it. I think that with the stainless steel, <clears throat> it heats up so fast. The um, the ramp up time is very very low. So if you're pumping it with too much too much wattage, it heat up, heats up too fast. It can't wick fast enough to, you know, keep it wet because there's a lot of cotton inside of there, and that's the issue. I was using it around 45 watts and really really enjoying it. Thought the flavor was good. It it lasted a good long time, but the problem I had was I stuck it on my DNA 200 and it sensed I guess. Um, the temperature part of, you know, stainless steel and DNA 20, they, or the DNA 200, it like kicked in tent mode and it gave it a power shot of 200 watts and it fried up the, the notch coil and broke it in half. So that's what happened to mine. That's why I don't have it on here or else I'd still have it on here. I really, really liked it. It vaped well and I'm going to get some, some more in and put them back on here. So the notch coil, not designed for super high wattages i'm pretty confident of that but if you you know if you can bring the wattage down a little bit and maybe go a little higher nick or whatever the case you're going to be happy so once you get it wicked the next thing is you gotta you just really you know straight up put your tank on here okay i'm going to use the stainless steel tank i haven't used it yet i haven't seen many people using it so we're going to try it out so it actually slips down and the tank actually kind of goes over it so that's what we got here now, if you look down in here, let me get my pokey tool. The biggest thing you need to worry about is make sure you have some space down in the side. So, like right in here, you want to have like a little bit of space. Stick something thin in there, and that little bit of air, you know, a little bit of space is going to help, help, uh, you know, the wicking keep wicking up faster. So there we go, now we can fill, okay, and this tank's easy to fill, literally just stick the dripper down into the hole, and if you have some space over there, it's going to let the air out, and it won't bubble up on you. So we'll get from the back, I don't know how I feel about the stainless tank, I like the glass tank, I broke one of them pulling it too hard. When you take these tanks off, make sure you, you twist. When you have it on your mod, you twist it and then pull it off. That'll help you for, help it from cracking. I cracked mine after like the first time I went to tear it off. All right, gonna wet this. So while we're letting this get all juiced up here, hit the pros. Pros. <clears throat> it's a small tank. I like the size. It's nice and low profile. The flavor is really, really good. It's easy to fill, easy to wick, easy to build on. Um, and that's pretty much it. I, I really, I really like it. I think the airflow is is good. It, you know, I like it coming from the top and from the back, with the way they designed this. I thought that was a good idea. You, you know, you're getting air coming from all around it. All right. Cons. This airflow system is complete pain is just a complete pain in the butt and actually I don't even know if this is gonna work here so make sure you have these ridges need to be up like the humps here that's what's gonna catch the top cap I don't even think this is gonna work
Yeah, that doesn't have it. So yeah, the biggest con is, is the way this airflow is set up. It, it's, it's it's stupid. It, to adjust it and change it, it's a complete pain in the butt. Hey. All right, and we got that set. So we went over the pros. Let's talk about the cons. The airflow system, like I said, it's the biggest con. Uh, it only holds two mil. Um, you know, it, it leaks. If you leave it on its side too long, it's going to leak on you. So, it, you know, it's not super pocket friendly. It'll hold like a little bit. I mean, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple atomizer. I mean, if you want to vape these things at, at 80, 90 watts, maybe this isn't the atomizer for you. But uh, if, you know, you, you like to stay under 50 watts and, you know, get yourself like a 0.5 ohm coil or, you know, whatever you want to put on there and you could stay under 50 watts, I, I think you'll really like it. And I think it looks really cool in the stainless mode like this. I think it's pretty, pretty sweet looking. So that's pretty much it. Let's take a vape. Alright. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on the next one.